Early this week, a social trading game called Friend.Tech launched. It's a game where you can go and deposit funds onto the Coinbase's base EVM network, and then you can bid on your friends or social influencers in the crypto space. And when I first done this, what I noticed was that when users first sign up, they not only bid on themselves, but other people look at their profiles and it gets like an early surge in the bids. And as you people bid on it, the price of that person's profile or the shares in that person's profile go up. This opened up an opportunity. If you can get a bid in before everyone else, you can buy each profile at fractions of a cent and hold them until they've been bid up and then sell them for a profit. And because the entire back end is on the blockchain, it's open and transparent, you'd actually need to use the user interface. You can interact directly with the blockchain, listen in for events, and then fire off transactions to do your trading. So I went ahead and built a trading bot for it. The code for this is open sourced on GitHub, and there's links to that and a 40 chill tutorial on my blog post, which is linked to in the description. The first thing I needed to do was set up an RPC URL. I got this from Chainlist, and then I needed to find a contract. So what I done was I exported my wallet address from the app to a block explorer. I just kind of checked what my address was doing in a block explorer. There's base scan, which is basically the same as Ether scan for the base network. And then what I did was I traced that back and found the contract for Friendtech V1. This has been verified so I could see the code and I could see what was going on. It allowed me to build your interface to interact with that contract. From there, I could create a listener to monitor for the trade event, to listen out to what trades are taking place and trade accordingly to that. What it does, it provides the supply or the number of units of that person that had been traded already. So I could check if this person was brand new and then see if they were actually bidding on themselves as well. And I could use that to create some logic around who I wanted to trade on. I took this a step further and actually created some logic around checking the balance of the user. So I checked the amount of ETH they've got in their wallet and I found that there was a correlation between how much ETH someone started with and their selling price for their asset. Basically, the whales were bidding up themselves. Now, this was all low amounts. No one's actually kind of allocating massive amounts of capital to this. It's not the next NFT system or anything. So it's just small, fun amounts of money. Over the last few days, I've been tinkering with it a little bit and made a few hundred dollars with different strategies. The first strategy was buying new users. This started to go really well. It was kind of when there was a lot of traction, people were discovering the platform for the first time. It was getting a lot of use. Then all of a sudden, disaster struck. I found that I was getting front run by another user. And when I first started doing this, there was probably only a couple of trading bots on the system. And today there's at least five or six different trading bots with different logic executing at the same time. The opportunity has become more saturated. My trades are being front run by a guy called No Name. And this wasn't like a gas efficiency thing. He was significantly more efficient at executing the trades, sometimes getting his orders in like a couple of blocks before me. Now, I think this might have been because I was checking the balance queries and I was using JavaScript as well, which isn't known for its performance. Or it may have been that he was monitoring the mempool and looking at incoming transactions and just running a more efficient system. To compound this, some of them released a bot to try and take advantage of the front runners. What would happen was be an anti-sniper bot would transfer funds from one wallet address to another new wallet, then buy their own shares to imitate a new user, wait for the front runners to come in and then sell them shares immediately, leaving everyone else as the bag holder before transferring to another new wallet address and doing the same thing all again. The way I combated this was to keep a running array of addresses in the script. So I'd look at the amounts of their balance because I was already doing balance checks anyway. And I'd say, oh, we've probably seen this user already. His balance is similar to one that's just kind of been there and we thought he was a bot anyway. So we can add that to our bot list. And it prevented a lot of them attacks. I also put together my own aggro trading bot to try and compete in this area. And what it would do is it kind of buy into a position and kind of buy in stages over the course of a minute different shares to imitate someone kind of buying up their own profile and then immediately sell them all afterwards to try and create a realistic system that front rows would try and execute on. But this was done externally so the profiles wouldn't have shown up in the app. So no people that were using that would have been affected. It was only a bot versus on bot battle. After a while, the margin started to slim down and it got more competitive as more trading bots entered the arena. I ended up with turning 0.01 ETH into 0.2 ETH, which is great margin, but it just didn't scale, which is why I've open sourced the code. I hope you find the code interesting. It provides some insights into how we exploit these opportunities in Web3. If you want to learn more about blockchain development and decentralized finance, then I've got a newsletter at pacini.substack.com. There's my blog, which has a full tutorial on how to set up and run this trading bot. And please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching.